Good morning, everybody. Action by Thought here. I'm Chris. Uh, let me put my little mouse down here. Uh, this particular video is going to be just a little bit different. Uh, I have been working on this coalition to compel. It's been on my heart for several months now. Uh, to put a little background on it, and this is within Chris Moore Ministries. Uh, it is not an official anything, or at least I haven't made it that way yet, if I'm going to at all. I don't even know how to do that, to be perfectly honest. Uh, and if anybody knows of any coalition to compel that's already out there, and uh, I have looked it up. I didn't see anything, not in that wording, even with a number on it. But anyway, uh, I did a short video several months ago. Uh, and in that video, just like this wording, and it just kind of, the video was to try, was in attempt to help compel, but it wasn't, that word wasn't on my mind, compel people to get out, in, uh, Christians to get out and evangelize, to outreach first, make connections, do it right, put it to prayer, and do it however God leads you to do it. I'm not trying to. Even with this, I'm not trying to to compel anybody to do anything in a way that God is not leading them to do. Uh, that is not the purpose here at all. Uh, put it to prayer, but we all are uh, commanded, actually, as Christians, to spread the good news of Christ, the Great Commission. Uh, now, how is your method? What personality did God put you in? To do that very thing, that's between you and God. I don't know that one. I'm looking at some of the stuff I've got in the floor back there. <laughs> you can see I'm not the neatest person in the world. Anyway, uh, as I was shooting or filming this video, the prior one a few months ago, the coalition to compel, a compelling coalition, I think is what I said initially on that video but that name let me get my fingers in the right direction that name and i don't have a printer or a, a thing that will print that big so i had to write it uh but that name has been on my heart ever since trying to and praying trying to figure out how to implement because in my heart i feel like god is telling me to push this to compel this well, there's been several methods that have run through my head on how to try to do things. And the bottom line of it is through prayer, always through prayer, and then Christian counsel, and then, you know, maybe trying, but to get outside the walls of the church, outside the house, even more than just the computer, which God has given, uh, put me in a ministry here that I dearly love doing. But with that, and I am praying for that growth. Uh, the I gave my testimony at church uh, a few weeks ago, and I absolutely loved seeing people's faces, having a more connection with them, and seeing reactions. Uh, we got one man, and I have gotten permission to use his name and his daughter. Actually, I'll get to that in a second. But Greg Metters, I saw him grin just a little bit on something I said. I have no idea what it was anymore. Doesn't matter. I saw some head shaking in agreement. I, uh, several things that uh, happened with that testimony on Action by Thought, which is my the name of the ministry of mine. Action by Thought dot blog and Action by Thought on YouTube. And I have been we've started, and me and another guy have been a part of our music director has a heart talk on YouTube. I encourage you to look that up. Um. Uh, and it's only got, I think, three videos on it right now. Like I said, it just started. But back to this. Coalition to Compel. What I am now presenting and compelling people to do is put things to prayer. Where's your heart? Uh, we can't cover everything that needs to be covered. That's why God has put us in this time that we're in, 2024, with the situation that is, 
He had a purpose for you. He had a purpose for you. He had a purpose for me. He had a purpose for all of us. We have to accept Christ first. And then he has a purpose for us. And he knew you and your purpose that he had for you before the foundation of the world. And I, when I edit this, I will put that scripture on the screen. Uh, we all have a purpose. It's whether or not we, by our free will that he gave us, decide to accept that purpose. And I may cover, uh, cover another couple of things, and I am going to try to keep this a lot shorter than, uh, than I usually do. But I do want to explain something. And I don't know how well y'all are going to be able to see all of this. If you want to see the individual papers, I've got them in a, on my pocket computer. Uh, if you will reply to this video or my email, which will be, or text me, my phone number and my email address will be in the description of the video. These, this line right here of papers is the tenets of coalition to compel. This is basically the, and with scripture with it, this is with biblical backing, this is the, well, it's the tenets. Uh, in trying to show this coalition to compel, it's not linked with the church. Yes, I do go to Gilgal Baptist Church, but that is not, this is not linked with the church. This is just with Chris Moore Ministries and uh, God-led. Because if it wasn't God-led, I wouldn't be this far. When I wouldn't have done all this, but I, would, I just couldn't. I haven't gotten it off my mind. I've got two kids shaking hands here. I've got two men shaking hands here. Of course, there's women. Of course, there's teenagers. Of course, you know the the kids are girls. There's you know I can't get every picture up here. But the point is, there's a cross on one representing Christian. There's just the other that represents somebody that you know a non-believer. Non-believer doesn't mean you don't believe in God. Non-believer means you haven't put your faith in Christ and asked Christ in your heart. The devil believes in God, but he's the ultimate non-believer. But anybody that has an asked Christ in their heart has the same destination as Satan, which is hell. Uh, these other two things are kind of extra. Don't worry about them. Uh, but the whole point of it is, and this is my request within coalition to compel. What I'm asking for is testimonies. If you have a particular testimony where there's things that you don't need to put on there for various reasons, I have parts of mine that I'm not going to put on uh, for various reasons. So don't think you're, uh, don't think you're alone with that. Um, uh, whether it's video and you send that to me or let your fingers do the talking and reply that way short long i don't care uh whether you reply to the video email if it's a longer one it might be easier with email and put on your email or whatever you send put on there whether you're okay with me posting it or not because my whole my intention, now if you ask me not to post it, I won't post it. I will honor that. And I will be very honored also that you sent me your testimony, even if you don't want me to share it. Um, but I would like to, what I'm wanting to do is all the medias that I'm on, which is you know, obviously YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, which is now X, uh, Pinterest, uh, Getter, I think that's how you pronounce it, G-E-T-R, G-E-T-T-R, I don't remember. Threads, uh, it's right there on my screen. Am I missing one? Uh, no, I don't think so. It, uh, LinkedIn, I'm also on LinkedIn. I want to share people's Christian testimonies. What has Christ done for you? What has Christ done through you? Any of it, uh, anything you're willing to share. Uh, 
I want to get testimonies inundated on social media. I want to encourage non-believers or even if they are Christians, but they've gone wayward. I want to encourage people to Christ and back to Christ. I want Christians, I want people, once they become Christians, to, you know, folks, uh, uh, heaven is our destination. It is our forever destination. Perfect, no more pain, no tears. And there's, I have no words for that description. The Bible does much better at describing heaven than I do. But I also want, and so does God, and it's in the Bible. God wants to bless your life while you're walking on earth. While you're, I mean, you get that blessing when you're obedient to Christ. Accept Jesus by faith. And then submit to him, obedience to him through the Holy Spirit and live your life for Christ. There is no better reward than the peace of God because whatever turmoil you've got in your life or whatever's going on around you, all this mess that's going on in the world today, Christian, if you're submitted to God, you have a peace in your heart. The non-Christian, whatever you have going on in your life, and I have no idea, could be good, could be bad. I was raised in basically Ozzy and Harriet land. That did not mean, that does not mean there didn't come with struggles. I have baggage too. I'm divorced twice. Uh, I don't mean that in bra I definitely don't mean it in bragging. I'm embarrassed about it actually, but it is part of my past, and God has used that. I've been I have been able to talk to some people with common ground. Not just that self esteem issues, which probably link uh, helped with or was part of getting me in a situation for two divorces. God will use you regardless of your circumstance. He, ta he talked to and saved prostitutes and killers. And I mean, there, there's, as long as you're breathing and with a sincere heart come to God, there's nothing that you have done, can do, or any that God won't forgive as long as you come with a repentant heart, sincere. Now, to put my testimony on here because it would be kind of weird for me to ask for y'all's testimony and me not share mine. At least to the point of this ministry to give the whole thing, it would take, that would be a longer video. Uh, I went, technically dad carried me up front at to the altar at church during a revival when I was six years old. I'm 56 now, six-ish years old. I am 56 now. There was a, there's a whole lot more to all this, of course, but I'm going to nutshell it. Uh, I didn't know a whole lot at six years old, but I did know I, need to, I needed to pray and ask Jesus in my heart. I knew that. I did not do that. I was scared of these tall people that are, you know, adults. <laughs> Nobody was scary, except it was just scary to this, to me at a little six-year-old. I knew what I needed to do, but I was just, I was scared. I was just, I was just kind of froze and I just shook my head when anybody asked me if I did that. Uh, shook my head, yes. Uh, so basically I lied. <laughs> but scared little six-year-old, God understood. God will not let you go. Now, let me back up just a little bit. Like I said at six years old, let's go back six, six years. Well, seven. You understand when I say it. Mom, when she was pregnant with me. She had every sign of miscarriage, every physical sign of miscarriage, except the pregnancy test came back positive every time. By Alabama state law, the doctor could not do the DNC procedure for miscarriage while the pregnancy test was positive. God saved my life. He brought me into the world and kept me safe by state law. Who knew? God had a purpose, and at six years old, I knew I, what I needed to step into things, and then obviously as I grew older, learned more of the Christian walk and my purpose. I argued that for 30 years, because I just surrendered to the call to preach November of 2023. Uh, that's, how, that's where this got started, and blog as well, and I don't have a blog for this one. I may type something up, but I usually do my blog and then use it for my notes on the video. 
Uh, my, I have never been good in front of a crowd. I've never been, you know, Sunday school, they think they laugh at me when I say that because I do talk a lot in Sunday school or in smaller groups, but the key to that is small groups, 10 or less, let's say, uh, and people that I know enough I'm comfortable with and I can, you know, I, me and Dad both, we kind of, Pride ourselves to use the word, I don't mean a sinful pride, uh, there's a better word for that, but of being students of people. In other words, we watch people, we kind of read the room, yet do we miss, of course. But um, in front of a crowd like the preacher at the pulpit, I'd lock down every time. I've tried to give my testimony in these 30 years that I'm talking about that I fought God. Let me see the stretch and I need to slide over to get more in that. Now that you've seen that. Uh, I've told my mother for decades, dad too, keep a watch. God's got something going on. He's got something for me. I know it. I can feel it, but I can't find it. And that's pretty much a quote. Uh, I would even stand at times when nobody was there or whatever. I'd stand up behind the pulpit with an empty room. I was the only one in the room. And like, no, 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 no. Uh -uh. Can't do this. No, 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 I can't do that. I can't do that, God. I can't do that, God. I'm not going to do that, God. Whether Whatever my intention was, whatever my heart was, I was still fighting God. I was still saying, no, I can't do that. And look at, you know, Abraham, Moses, all these men in the Bible that basically had the same initial reaction. I just fought for 30 years. I'm not the only one that's done that. I'm not in that boat alone. But God silenced me in those time frames because when I would try to give my testimony, I got emotional. I started tearing up, I, and it overwhelmed me. I could not talk. About three and a half words in, and I'm done. And irritated because I wanted to share what God has done for me. I wanted to praise God in that method. But God wanted me obedient first. Uh, that that I was talking about that I would bring up Again, when I was giving my testimony at church, and it was there's a three and a half minute video of my testimony on my YouTube channel. Uh, if you are so inclined to to look it up, it looks like it came off the cell phone. It didn't, but it looked like it did. Uh, like I said, Greg Matters grinned a little bit on something I said, and this I'm not sure his daughter uh, McKay was even there. I don't remember. I did scan the room just a little bit, but. Uh, I don't remember whether she was there or not, but I bring her up for this. And there was a point where I was a healthy jealousy, but there was a, a her, I believe it was her grandfather died. Now this has been several years ago. And McKay is very much into the performing arts, singing, a very talented young lady. Very good singing. We all get a blessing listening to her every single time. And she sang a tribute to her just recently, as in the funeral was the weekend, was that weekend that, of the Sunday that she sang. She closed her eyes a couple of times. I believe there was some a, few, a tear or two string. You could hear her voice crack just a couple of times, but not much. I was kind of paying attention for it because of that struggle that I had. But I was so impressed. I think impressed is a better word than jealous. I was so impressed that she could push through the emotion and sing her song, that tribute for her grandfather, something I could not do at that time. And now Sunday, two weeks ago, so not this last Sunday, but two weeks ago, or, yeah, uh, no, last week. I'll get it right in a minute. Uh, now, granted, it wasn't but three and a half minutes, but I enjoyed the entire three and a half minutes. That's very, that's, I was nervous, but complete peace. I was where I was supposed to be, doing what I was supposed to do, and in my opinion, and I, I pray that I'm correct, and I am praying on it, uh, eager for more opportunities to share the Word of Christ and share my testimony with others, whether it's behind a pulpit or a uh, 
outing, a uh, men's retreat, any kind of, re whatever. Uh, God has loosed my tongue. But he kept it bound for 30 years because I was disobedient for 30 years. Uh, and I'm continuing to do the, I want to I wanna expand that. I want to do some uh, heart talk that I told you about a second ago. Look it up. Uh, you can find mine on Action by Thought on YouTube or Chris Moore Ministries. I believe both, uh, either one of those will, because it's under Action by Thought is within the Chris Moore Ministries umbrella or Action by Thought dot blog. Um, I've got a link to the Heart Talk on mine, but the blog, I mean the the podcast that we did. There's three of us there. Uh, we really had a good time with that. I want to stretch some of that out and do some on this channel as well. That's a God thing. When, where, when do I get somebody that will cooperate enough to do it? Most, lots of folks I know don't want to be on screen, and that's okay. Uh, but the bottom line, you know, I shared the testimony of how this my ministry started. This is a, a extension of that that I didn't bring up behind the that on that Sunday during that three and a half minutes. Uh, again, I'm going to circle back. I've given my testimony, or that part of my testimony now. This coalition to compel, the whole point of it is, because YouTube, the, YouTube is on the web, obviously. So is the blog. So we're in all the medias. They have a potential to be on the other side of the world as well as anywhere in the uh, United States. I'm asking for your testimonies in type or in video or both. Anybody that's willing, if you want to share it, but you don't want me to blast it out on the medias, put that on there and I promise you I will honor that. Um, but I'm also asking for those that are willing to let their testimony be blasted out. You don't have to put your name on it. Just give the testimony. If you would give me the, you know, the, the state you live in or, or something like that. Uh, be as personal as you want, be as impersonal as you want so far as your, your name and all. And if you have to dance around things because you want to share something, but there's kids involved or whatever, there's a situation that people can't know that it's you talking about that situation because that could be a problem. I understand that. Most of us do. And I don't want to breach that. But uh, share what you can. Share what you will. Uh, pray about it. Because this whole thing is uh, not only sharing testimonies, but share prayer requests. Uh, folks, we've got to pray. And I want to, to end this with this. James 4, 7, and 8 for Christians uh, or the lost that become Christian, but this part is for uh, James 4, 7, and 8 speaks to Christians. Therefore, which is pay attention, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Wash your hands, you sinners. And to be honest with you, I'm basically telling you to... Uh, Put your life, put your confess your sins and put your life at the foot of the cross. Uh, I didn't bring my phone in here with me, so I can't look it up right now. Submit to God first. And then we have to actually boot on the ground. It's granted it's spiritual warfare. But resist the devil. Put your full armor of God on. Submit to God, full armor of God, but actively resist. You can't just, oh, well, it's there. I'm going to do it and know that it's wrong. It might not even be a sin in itself, but it's wrong for you because God's telling you no, or maybe you've got a weakness in something and you put, put a priority on that instead of God, which is a sin because that's false God. But then it says the devil will flee from you, Christians. The devil will flee. Flee is to run from danger. Look it up. I did. It's Oxford Dictionary. Flee is running from danger. 
the devil will flee from you. You are dangerous to the devil when we're submitted to God and we are actively resisting. We cannot beat the devil. We're not strong enough. But when we have submission to God, God in us, the devil's running from God, but with us filled with God, or and with us filled with God, because we are submitted to God and willing and wanting God's direction, the devil will run from us. Now, that does not mean we're not going to have turmoil. Because we are. The Bible also says that. But God will not tempt you further than you can be tempted. And that is a thing. We, we are human. Even though we've got God there with us, that human side is still going to come out. And there are limits there where we would fold and give in after a point. Well, God knows what that point is, and I promise you it's not the point you think it is. I, you, we all, we are tougher than we think, especially when we are backed by God. Or actually led by God, excuse me. That was bad terminology. When we are led by God. But God also knows that that flesh still is there. And he will not let us be tempted past that point. And he will give us a way out. He will give us a way of escape. When you say, when you got something presented to you or you're thinking about something or whatever and you get that little voice that says, don't do that. That's one of those ways out. But you have to be resisting. I have to be resisting the devil with the submission to God and actively take hold of that, picture it as God's hand there, and join hands with God and let him pull you out of the situation because he's telling you no. He's telling you to get out. Find your way to get out. And I've told my kids in the past, and it still applies today, I don't care how old they are, if they either make a bad decision or with friends, and the friends have made a bad decision, but one way or the other, they're kind of in a pickle. I'm a phone call away, and I will come get them regardless of what situation they're in. We might have to talk about it. We might not. But dead is coming if they need me, if that's the best way that they can get out, or if they may feel like it's the only way they can get out. That's one method that God gives us is the strength of family or friends who say, hey, I'm in trouble, I messed up, whether they messed up or not, whatever. I'm in trouble, I messed up. Come get me, please. Because I don't know how to get out of this. Anywhere, anytime. And it's not just my kids. Folks that know me, if somebody calls, hey, can you come help me? If I'm where I can, absolutely. If I'm, if it's not so beneficial for my timing, but they really need that help, then my timing is just mine. That would be more of a God thing. And if it's that dire, I will stop what I'm doing and come help my friend. That's part of what God's talking about there. That's not the only way. That's just a scenario. Anyway, I'm asking for your testimonies, video or writing. I like the videos because I can see body language, voice deflection, all of that. A lot of people would rather read. If, you would, if you're willing to do this and you would rather type it than talk it, absolutely. If you're even willing to talk it, but you don't want your voice on there, hit record and stay off the camera. Good with that. Maybe put a Bible in the picture or a picture of Jesus or both or something like that. Pray on it. Let God lead. That's all I got for this particular, I guess we'll call it an episode, and I'm right at the 30-minute mark, which is 10 minutes longer than I anticipated or intended. But there was a good bit to say at the same time, and I do like giving some examples. So, again, send me your pray, 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 pray. Pray about this. Pray about your testimony. Pray about your situations. And look up the Lord's Prayer. 
you can quote it, just read it off if you want to. But if you'll break it down and run your prayers by the Lord's Prayer, that's a game changer. That's a life changer. And I'm living proof. If you don't really understand what it's saying enough to, to do that breakdown, reach out to me. I'll help you with it. That's uh, I'd be honored to. Uh, all of this in the name of Jesus because we are not powerful enough to do any of this. I'm no more special than anybody. It's just um, I am saved. I am going to heaven. I have that peace. And right now I am doing my absolute dead level best, and I pray for growth in that ability to be submitted to God, hear him correctly, and go where he leads. And I'm excited about it. Me and my wife both are. Uh, folks, I love you in Christ, but the best part is God loves you, and I want to help spread. I want I want to help you spread your testimony. Your it could be part of the Great Commission. I, I really think that is part of it because when people read these testimonies, keep it real. Uh, don't share things you don't want to share. I mean, a hundred percent is is not necessary. Like this was just a, uh, basically more ministry testimony than anything else. Because uh, there's a lot more to the personal testimony like everybody has. But uh, I think this would be qualified in part of the Great Commission because it's putting what God has done for you out there. And it will resonate with somebody. I don't care how dull you think your life is. Somebody else's is the same. I don't care how bad your life has been. God loves you. And your testimony will, I do care, but you know what I mean with don't care. Regardless of how bad things have been, at least in your perspective, God's bigger. God created everything, the whole cosmos in us and, and all. God loves you. God wants you. He wants your companionship, and all you have to do is ask Christ in your heart and then rely on him. Till the next one.